there's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down Hey everybody, so not feeling too ambitious today, but it's supposed to start snowing and be cold the next two days. Um, so I figure I better get started on this. I so I decided because you can tell that that vacuum pump is only leaking from the body, it looks like, that it might be worth just pulling and taking it apart and seeing, because there's just one thin O-ring that seals that body. Uh, maybe it got pinched or is deformed or something. Um, so yeah, if it's just that O-ring, I might just put RTV in that body and put it back together and run that mechanical pump still. Um, yeah, and then also going to pull off that alternator bracket and get that repaired somehow. Yeah, I'm gonna get started on that and I'll catch back up with you once I have those parts off and I'm tearing them apart. So here we go. All right, so I just got done pulling the vacuum pump which I, for, I forgot, I knew I hated doing that, but man, does that suck. Got covered in oil and power steering fluid and all sorts of grime and banged up my knuckles as usual, but I'll stop crying. But honestly, I think just pulling it out reminded me of how much I hate doing it and I'll probably go with the electric pump anyway. Um, still, in a minute here, we're gonna check and make sure that my body bolts were actually still tight and if, you know, if they're loose, they're loose. And then we're still gonna split the body and just check out that O-ring, just, just out of curiosity. Um, but yeah, then pulled off my alternator bracket. So this is the top bracket that cracked and broke right here. So we're gonna repair that. And yeah, so the bottom bracket that I made also broke because you know, the alternator wasn't supported at the top, so it was just constantly torquing and jerking around. Um, so yeah, when I get my welder, I'll probably repair this one, and I also have that spare that I showed you guys. So fix that, get the alternator bolted back up. Uh, I pulled my steering shaft apart, and honestly, everything looks good in here. All the splines are still all there. Um, doesn't really look damaged. So I'm gonna investigate a little further on this. I don't know if maybe there's something stuck in that gap and it wasn't able to tighten, you know, completely around that shaft, but everything seems fine. So I might just clean it up and put that back together. If those, now let's go ahead and check out and see if those vacuum pump bolts were tight and split open that body and check that O-ring. Like I said, first, I'm just gonna go ahead and check and see if these body, body bolts are tight or if I screwed up and they're loose. That one's tight. Oh man, that one is loose. Oh man, that one is loose. Uh, when I noticed the oil leak on the road, I did actually take the time to you know spray it down with brake cleaner, run it and watch to see where it was leaking from. And I did actually check one of the bolts on the body of that pump, but it was the one that was the most accessible. The other one was kind of tucked in the back. And I checked, like I said, I checked the one that was tight and I assumed the other one was tight too because, you know, I tightened them the same exact way, you know, to a science, of course. <laughs> so it's even more embarrassing to know that, you know, I could have just taken the extra time and effort and tightened up that second bolt and I would have been good to go. But it's kind of a blessing in disguise because that's honestly the main thing that drove me to come home early. And if I wouldn't have done so, I would have been you know, out in the middle of nowhere still during this coronavirus epidemic. Um, and there's other repairs that should have been done that I probably would have put on the back burner. Um, so really, it worked out well that I got home exactly when I did. And you know, it's for the best because now I get to look over everything that I had concerns with and really take my time and make sure it's done right this time, hopefully. So, you know, like I said, it's a little embarrassing and I'm, I'm disappointed in myself, but at the end of the day, it all worked out. So I'm not mad. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I'm still gonna split it open. Uh, check out that O-ring, see if maybe I still wanna put some RTV and seal it back up. 
I feel like I don't think I could find a torque spec on it, but I got it tight, like as tight as I could just with, you know, a, a combination wrench. And then I gave it a few taps with like a crescent wrench at the end, but I guess that didn't hold. See, that one's really tight and I could have sworn I got them both equally tight. I wonder if that has something to do with it. There's two different bolts. I'm not sure if I noticed that the first time I took it apart. Let's see. Yeah, I feel like there shouldn't be two different types of bolts, honestly. So far, the O-ring appears to be fine and not damaged. Wipe the surface down. You can definitely see and there's oil built up all around here where it was leaking out of the bottom side. Even though, you know, the O-ring sits in this groove and is supposed to be enough, I'm kind of tempted to go ahead and put a thin line of RTV on this face on the outside. Um, I don't think it should harm anything and the o-ring will still be able to do what it's supposed to do it should just be like a a secondary seal just in case because now i'm tempted to run this again because it was my fault and not just you know a worn seal already or a busted o-ring so i'm not mad at the pump anymore i'm mad at myself <laughs> yeah Okay, so I cleaned up both faces and inspected the O-ring and put, put it back into the uh, groove. And it looks like it still is in perfect condition. Can't feel any defects and it fits perfectly in there. So I am going to put it back together right now. Oh, So I'm gonna put the O-ring in and I am gonna put some RTV red all along the outside of this face and then use blue thread locker for those bolts. Hopefully I don't regret that, but I don't see how it could hurt really. Thread locker on the bolts. So it looks like this one bolt that has that extra little tip on it doesn't actually screw down all the way, I noticed this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toss a washer or two on here, uh, cause I love washer stacks on everything. Um, that, that should work out. Yeah, I'm just gonna put a lock washer and a washer on it. All right, now I'm gonna let that RTV dry out and clean this thing up completely and see if I have the ambition to actually reinstall it tonight. I wasn't expecting to find a loose bolt, to be honest. I thought I was gonna be replacing the whole thing with an electronic pump. And honestly, I still probably would, but 
You know, if I did that, I would have to buy an electric pump and wire that in, plumb it in, and then get a whole new power steering pump that's specific to the 4BT Cummins. So it ended up being more costly. And I said, now that I know that it was my fault and not failed seals already, it kind of changed, changed the game here. So hopefully we got it this time. I think between the RTV thread locker and then identifying that that one bolt was a little longer and the face wasn't actually clamping tight against the body of the pump. I think, I think we got it handled. So cross your fingers. <laughs> so I'm just going to try and JB weld this cracked bracket and see what happens. I'm not sure if it'll be strong enough, but it'll at least be a start. JB weld this back together. And if necessary, I'll, uh, Cut a piece of steel and bolt it on either side of this crack. So I'll clean it up and get this JB welded and we'll have to let that dry first and see if that worked. Um, also, I've got, I've got some metal tube that I'm going to put between here so that when I tighten this up, it's not actually pulling in. It's going to stop and hold tight. So I'll show you that too. All right, that looks pretty good. Honestly, it might do the trick, especially with that piece of tube in between. So I just had this laying around. So I think I'll take a measurement here and I'll cut a piece to fit between this gap so that when I clamp it together, it won't squeeze and break that again. So let's do that now. Looks like three and a quarter. Just kind of check the fitment just visually right now. Obviously that JB weld is still drying, so I don't want to mess with that. So that actually looks like it's gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit more. If anything, there's you know less than a millimeter to be shaved off. All right, so yeah, that should be good to go. Um, like I said, we're gonna to have to wait like four to six hours before this actually cures. So we'll get, we'll get back to it. But just to show you, that's gonna fit perfectly between here. Yeah, so I am in North Dakota and the weather's not great yet. So there's obviously a ton of things to be done with the van, but I'll probably put a lot of it on standby, at least for another week. Um, let the weather at least get into the 50s, hopefully. And a lot coming up next week. We've got a lot of packages coming. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. I plan to upload a video probably tomorrow, and I'll go through everything that's coming in the mail and give some updates on some pretty cool projects coming up. So hopefully see you soon.